Hi, and welcome back to the InterStat uh, lecturing series. And uh, we are working on this unit called a testing hypothesis. This is our lecture number three. We talk about the type one and the type two errors. This is the second part of the lecture number three here. Okay, so the, let's go back uh, and uh, take a look uh, what we did so far. So, you know, the, so like uh, for our part one lectures, we are focused on the, what well, we are focused on the two things, right? So we talk about uh, what is the critical values and what is the alpha values here. Correct. So if you kind of remember that in the first video. So the what is the alpha value? Because in our lecture number two, we introduced a new concept about the p-value. So we said the p-value is the chance if the non-hypothesis is true, then that statistics happens, right? So we said a smaller p-value provide a stronger evidence, we can go ahead and reject a non-hypothesis. So that's why we kind of think about how small is a small, right? So that's why we kind of have this idea about the alpha values. So we say, hey, do you know, like different people, they might think, hey, 0.05 is small enough. So for a different situation, then you will say, hey, the 0.03 is small enough. So what, you know, what is small enough means, right? So that's why we said for the testings here, so the last part one of this lecture, we say, hey, let's define the concept about the alpha values here. Okay, that's the threshold. So for the p-value, so we say, hey, as soon as the p is less than this one, that means I have a strong evidence, right? Then the next things we talk about in the part one, let's kind of refresh it, is like a, this is what we call the, is the critical values here, right? So that's what the last things we talk about is the critical value. So what is a critical value? We said a critical value because of the, the p-value, you know, is it, is, you know, without the software, it's difficult to find. So not everybody, you know, can find the t value without the help from the software. So let's we say, okay, how about instead of define finding the p value, let's use another thing so we call it a critical values here, right? So we say the critical value is a corresponding to whatever the alpha value you defined. And also the critical value depends on what you are testing, right? What is your hypothesis testing? they do have an underlying distribution assumption. So what we did in our previous lecture, we said, give you an example. If the hypothesis testing, you know, it satisfied the normal distributions, and then those are the critical value table we can use here. And uh, so like uh, for the different hypothesis testing, your table, the distribution assumptions could be different. That means you might need to use a different table. So like we talk about the T distribution, chi-square distribution, F distribution, those things, right? All right, so but in here we just said, okay, so let's do the most commonly used ones, normal distribution. And uh, then let's see how that work. So after we, you know, the after we, you know, get the in ideas about how to use those critical value to determine the test, uh, you know, the hypothesis testing, you know, we have enough evidence or don't have enough evidence, right? And then we are going back, uh, we're going to, you know, have one lecture, you know, totally just to focus on the normal distributions the different type of the distributions there. Okay, so for our, second part of this lecture. So we're going to talk about, you know, the two types of the errors here, right? So the, for the two types of the error, this is one of the things about the statistic. Let's, this is the things that people either like statistics or people they don't like statistics. What is this thing? It's the uncertainty. Because the statistics we talk about in the beginning, the introduction, we know the statistics is using the sample 
And we try to use those simple data to draw some conclusion about your population. So every time you take a sample, they always can associate with the wrong decision making based on your samples here, because they don't represent the whole population. So you really try to do estimation and the forecasting, those things, right? So you always associate with two types of the errors here. So these two types of error, we cannot avoid for the statistic decision. So let's take a look at what is the type one errors here. That means that based on your data, then the, when do you make a type one error? So the type one error, here's the definition. Here is when the H0 is true. That means if your H0 is a non-hypothesis is true, but for some reason your data show you, then you reject non-hypothesis. Obviously, you made errors, right? So this type of an error we call is a type two, type one errors here. Let me give you this the example I always like to use. Uh, this is the, the, in the criminal cases here, right? So the, So is this suspect is innocent or this suspect is guilty? Okay, so let's take a look at what, uh, you know, what type of the error you are making. So if you are, you know, if we are going to the trial, you are part of the jury. And uh, so when, you know, after they presented the evidence, when you try to come to the verdict to see this person is guilty or not. So in here, so you are going to, you know, you will have the chance to make this error. That means uh, when the H0 is true, you reject H0. So what type of the error this one's here? This one's we say, if the suspect is innocent, but you reject the sus you reject the H0. So what is your verdict say? So you say suspect is in fact is innocent, but jury say the suspect is what guilty, right? So this type of the error, this is what we call it is the type one error. In fact, in the criminal trial cases here, this type of the error is a very serious error, right? Because the, if the suspect is really is innocent and uh, you say the suspect is guilty, special, you know, like if it's like in the, like in the life or death, you know, like whether the suspect will get the death penalty or not. And this is a very, very serious error. Even if it's not in the death penalty, if this person is innocent, you say it's guilty. So what type of, you know, you, you might, you know, this person might be put in the jail for 20 years, correct? All right, so then that's why this type of error is a very serious error, but do we have chance to make it an error? Oh yes, every time if you take a sample, then that's, they'll always have uncertainty statistics here, right? Okay, so this is a type one error. So what is the type two errors here? So the type two arrows here, it will tell you here. So if the H zero is false, okay, and then you fail to reject H zero, okay. So that means if H zero is false, you fail to reject H0. So let's take a look in the criminal trial cases here, what type of the errors in here. So if H0 is false, that means the suspect, you know, probably is guilty. And, but what juries says, so juries decide, suspect is innocent, right? 
or you can say the jury does not uh, have enough evidence to say the suspect is guilty. So you need to set the suspect free. So this type of error also happen frequently in the criminal trial cases here, right? So in general, the type two errors here, right? So if you make this, uh, uh, if you if you make this error, you set a guilty person free. And then if you make a type one error, you set the innocent people as a guilty, right? So like for the different situations, you know, some situation type one errors is way more serious than the type two error. And some cases here, type two error is more serious than the type one errors here, right? So this is what we talk about is the type one, type two errors. So as a as a statistician or when you work on the statistic data, based on your data, right? So when you try to make the decisions here, so you need to be careful what is the chance and how serious is those error you're going to make here, right? So for example, for the criminal chart, you know, trial cases, I know if I make a type one errors here, you know, a innocent person might waste 20 or 30 years, or maybe even the death penalty for an innocent persons, right? So that's why we need to be very, very careful here. Okay, so this is our two definitions about the type one error and the type two error. Okay, so make sure we fully understand what that means here. Okay, so now the next thing here is let's try to take a look at the table presentation of the error. So this is kind of like the, it's easier to see and a lot of textbook, uh, they put these uh, tables together so here, right? So here. So here you will have a tables like this. Okay. So here you will say, this is H0 is true. That means your non-hypothesis is true. And uh, here you will say this is H0 is a false, all right? And uh, so this is the, so this is what we call the, is the truth, right? So the, this is the truth. Probably we don't know, you know? So for example, is this person really is innocent or guilty? That's the truth. Is this person is innocent or this person is guilty, right? So this is the truth lying behind those, uh, okay? And now in here, then you will say here, this is a reject H0 and uh, this is retained H0 or you will say, I'm not rejecting that, right? So now maybe let's put on the, different colors here. So that's what in here you say, this is retained H0. And what is this columns here? So this columns here, this is called my decisions here. All right, so the that's why in here, let's take a look, all right? So what type of an error I'm making here? So the, when the truth is H0 and my decisions reject, what type of the error I make here? I make a type one error here, okay? And then we said the next one, we just defined, we said H0 is false. And then I fail to reject, that's retain me, right? I fail to reject, so what error I made? I made a type two error here. Okay, and uh, then the next thing is here. So the here, this one's here. So you will set uh, um, in here, if uh, H0 is a false, I reject it. That's okay, right? So if this person, I reject it when H0. So that means I made the correct decisions here. If H0 is false, I reject it. And then in here, so they said, uh, H0 is true, I retained it. This is also, is okay, see here. Then, you know, one of the things we will define later is, uh, you know, the this box here, right? So this is really, we said, you know, remember the research hypothesis, right? The, it's HA. So 
when you do the hypothesis testing, I'm really is very interested in the HA. So like you say, H0 is false. So that means whatever the things I want to test, you reject the H0, whatever this is, this box support my research hypothesis. That means whatever the things I try to test, I do that. So like the criminal cases here, if this person H0 is false, that means if this person, this suspect, is guilty, I reject them. Now I can prove this person is guilty. That's really is my goals, right? So this one, this box also we say this is the power. It's the power of the test here, okay? And uh, so that means I really want this box have a very, very good opportunity you know, the probability. That means my evidence and my power, and that's really is to try to support, you know, you know, my research hypothesis. So this box here, you say H0 is true. I retained H0, that's fine. I did not prove anything, right? So that's fine. So the, that's what this box here, but this box is really what I, I am very interested, right? So I hope that all this effort, you know, I spend, uh, try to do, I'd be able to prove my research hypothesis here. All right? So it's interesting concept, right? So I think the, from these tables here, you don't need to remember the tables, right? Just uh, make sure you understand, right? So what you are looking for, and then you will not get confused, okay? So the, now, the next thing here, we're going to give some term. They said, how often will type one error occurs here, all right? Okay. And uh, so let's take a look. Let me write down the definitions here. So in here, okay, so here, let me get this word a little bit bigger so it's like you guys can see better. Okay. Okay, so here. Okay, so now, so what is type one arrows here, right? So let's say it's here, since type one arrow, right in here, this box here, Type one arrow, if you reject, is a true, is rejecting a true non hypothesis. So the, that's what we say the p values, right? So p value is the probability when the non hypothesis is true, the statistical value you're going to have, right? The probability for that statistic value occurred. So we said uh, we set uh, the the alpha value is the threshold of the p-value is, you know, when I reject it, if it's less than that, we reject it. So that's why the probability of the type one arrow really is our alpha value, alpha value, alpha level. Or what is we call this the alpha level? We call it, this is our confident levels, right? Okay. Oh, no, it's not a confidence level. I'm sorry. Here is our significance level. So this is our significance level. So it's I am like in the five percent, ten percent, or one percent, right? So now the alpha values kind of make sense. That means if you set right, so if you set alpha equal to 0 0.05, right? So we say if the p value less than 0 0.05, so what do you, you know, like when you set here the alpha equal to 0 0.05, what's that mean? That means when you try to make your decisions here, when you tell the people your conclusion, you set yourself an up boundary. So you say the alpha equal to 0.05, that means I'm not going to make a type one error more than 5%, right? So I want to limit my risk to make the type one error is less than 5%. So if you set a 0.01, so that means you even set a tighter, you know, you even set the 
tighter restriction. You said, I'm not going to make my arrow more than 1% of the chance, right? So like a, for example, for our criminal test cases, right? So if you want to say this person is guilty, so your alpha value, because this is such a serious arrows, right? So you, your alpha value, you might want to set at a point oh once, right? So that means uh, the chance you're going to make a wrong decision to put an innocent person in the jail could be less than one in a thousand, one in a 10,000, okay? So now this is how do you link the alpha values here. So the type one arrow, this is what we call it is, so the type one arrow is what we, the alpha value is what is our type one arrows here. So in the testing hypothesis, typical we set the you know the significance value. That means that I'm kind of limited my type one arrow. That means this is the upper bound. I cannot whatever the decision I make. I hope the my the chance for me to make a wrong decision is less than the whatever the alpha value I'm choosing here, right? So the, then the next thing is here. So the type one arrows, right? So we use the alpha. Then here we also give the type two arrow. We call it is the what? We give a, we call it is the beta. Okay, it's just the different notation. Okay, so type two arrow is a beta, right? So when the H zero is a false, you return. So we talk about the name. The power while ago, so the power will be the one minus beta, right? Because the whole probability here, the when the H zero is false, I can have a two decision, right? I reject it or retain it, right? So if I say I retain it is beta, then my one minus p is the power p. Okay, so now let's try to write down the relation between the type one and the type two here. Okay, so now the first ones here. Let's see here, the type one, we use the notation alpha and uh, type two, we use the notation beta. And uh, because of that, so we know that since we are really interested in is the power. Remember, like I said, the power is what to support your research hypothesis, right? So the power is one minus beta. In the ideal world, what do you want? In the ideal world, right? So in the ideal world, what do you want? I want what? Of course, I want to my both uh, type one and the type two as small as possible. Correct? In the ideal world. And also, I want my power as big as possible. But we are not living, in, we are not living in an ideal world, right? So the less means uh, we cannot do that. So in fact, type one, and the type two, so so this is in the ideal world, but uh, unfortunately we not live in an ideal world. So in fact, in the real world, what happened? Alpha type one, alpha and the beta. So let me see type one and the type two. They go opposite direction, oh my gosh, right? So if you do one way, you're going to go, the other, other arrow is going to go other ways here. And uh, so in here, let's, uh, for example, so here, let's mean um, when I mean to go up, opposite direction. So for example, for the type one arrow, right? So type one alpha arrow, if this one goes smaller, 
Now, unfortunately, your type two arrow, this is a beta, is going to get a larger. Right? So like in the criminal trial cases here, so let's put it here again, is innocent. And HA is guilty. If you want a very, very small type one error, that means if an innocent person, you say it's guilty, right? So that means you want the, your evidence is totally solid. And you, you know, so if you don't have a totally solid evidence, even something looks very promising, and then because you want to limit your type one error, what happens here? So, Right, so what happened? Because then you are going to let a, a guilty person go free. So the, the guilty person go free, that's a type two arrows, right? So that arrow will be automatically increased. If you put a, such a tight requirement said, uh, you know, for the innocent person, I say it's guilty. Then, uh, so the opposite, you know, is the guilty person will go free, will kind of go up. Right, so the same, that's why they go opposite direction. So then also the same time, see here, the, if the type one, type two arrow beta, if you say, I want this one go as small as possible, right? So the type two arrow goes small, then, you know, automatically you go into inflate the type one arrow, so go the smaller, go the larger, see here. Right, so like uh, here you said, uh, well, and I don't want to set a guilty pe person go free, and uh, I want this chance to go, and then what happens here? This one is automatically go larger here, and uh, you know for this uh, criminal trial cases, like in the very very old age, like the Asian Asian wars or Asian dynasties here, right? So. A lot of them, they do the second part here. So what do they say? If they have some suspect, they said that they, they would kill 100, for example, they will kill 100 innocent person instead of let the one guilty person go free, right? So that means that's why, you know, they want the type two arrow getting smaller and then they automatically inflated the type one arrow. That is a terrible practice, but uh, it happened a lot of time because for example, the king, they want to kill all his enemies, uh, all his enemies, right? So the, that's why, you know, they will try to kill that 100 innocent person. If one of them inside this 100 innocent person is a king, you know, was king's enemy, you know, you're going to get killed, right? So that is terrible practice, but uh, you can see here, right? So that's why the, these two arrows, go in the different uh, directions here. So that's why in the statistical world, how to make it which one is which is very difficult here. So the only way, so the only way you can increase, you can decrease, uh, you can decrease, the both arrow from statistical point, what you can do, ha, you increase sample size. So if you take a larger sample, right? So you have enough evidence. It's just like in the criminal trial cases, it's the same things here. If you have more evidence, right? And uh, then the chance you make the wrong decision probably getting lower and lower for both arrows here. And uh, that is another, you know, the things we have in statistics. Yes, you say it's easy to increase the sample size, but increase the sample size means what? Well, that, you know, means what? Ha means money, right? That means you need to spend more money, okay? And uh, so that's what is the problem here, right? So we know the large sample size will be better. And uh, the chance for me to make the mistake is going lower, but a lot of time from the companies, from manufacturing or from the different practice area, 
Increasing sample size means money. And a lot of time we cannot afford. So that is where you, know, you need to make a smart decisions here, okay? So now, you know, this is, let me show you, this is kind of like the, we talk about here, the type one arrow and type two arrow, they go to opposite directions, more from the, you know, the intuitive and the kind of the common practice point, right? So now I want to show you how do I, you know, if you use the graphic presentations, how do you do, you know, the type one, the type two arrow? I think this way maybe will help you to get a better understanding here, right? So the, let's take a look. This is more statistics. Uh, you know, driven, so you can from the graph, you know, let's assume, all right, so this is the, so let's assume here, okay, so this is your true H0, okay, so this is a true H0, so let's use your H non-hypothesis values here, and uh, then you have a distribution for this non-hypothesis, right, so we talk about the critical values and uh, up the alpha values, right? So remember that, all right? So we will say this is my alpha value. And so this is my alpha value. So, or this is my critical, then in here, this is my critical. So this is my critical values here, right? So I'm going to reject. So we also remember here, this red area, we call this what? We call this rejection areas, right? So we also say, I'm going to reject non-hypothesis if my statistic fall in this areas here, okay? So now let's take a look. So this is what? This is a type one arrows, right? Right. Okay, so now let's take a look at what is the type two arrow related here. So think about you have another distribution here. Let me okay. okay. So if you have another distribution here. Okay. So this is your non-hypothesis. Then you say, hey, here, this is my alternative hypothesis, right? So alternative hypothesis here, then from this line here, right? Okay, so this line here, right? So what is the, you know, the, what is the, what is the type two arrow? Type two arrow saying what? Type two arrow say when H zero is a false, right? H zero is a false. That means I'm in the what? I'm in the H eight, right? So when the H zero is a false, I fail to reject. That means I retain. If this is the H zero, you reject. Fail to reject is which part? Which part will be failed to reject here will be these portions, right? For the H zeros, right? So the same things here. So right now they say that here, they say, okay, the type twos here is, you know, when H zero is false, so I go to H eight, fail to reject, supposed to go this side, that means that this is the side. Right, so when I'm in the HA, I fail to reject the H0. So what is this here? This is my beta. All right, this is my beta, right? So if this is my beta, so I know what is this part when the H0, when the HA is true, you know, I reject the H0, that means that I accept the HA. So what is these things we just talked about? We say, this is good. What is this one? This is my power here. You see here? Okay, so now let's take a look, right? So if you say, I want to reduce my type one arrows here, right? So you said, uh, you know, I want to reduce my type one arrow. So now let's take a look at what's going to happen. 
If you want to reduce your type one error, that means now, instead of this red area, I'm going to put my type one error to here. So this black one area, so this is my what? This is my new type one error, all right? Okay, so if this is your new type one error, okay, you draw a line, go down here. Oh boy, what happens here? So the where is your new beta? Is the when HA is true, you fail to reject. If this is a new type one, so where is your fail to reject? Will be all the way to the left, right? So now in here, you fail to reject. So what is my new beta here? Fail to reject is the left hand side. So this red one, this is my new beta, or oh, this is my new what? Type what? Type two error. Did you see here? So when the type one, these black ones here, getting smaller than the red one. Oh boy, what happened to my beta? My beta, the new beta, the red one is what? It's getting bigger. So that's why we said the type one and the type two are opposite. Then at the same time, you see what happened to the power. The power used to be the, the purple ones right now with this new one. So this is my power. Correct? So this is my new power. What is the power? One minus beta. So what has my new powers here is decreasing also, right? So from the graphing, it's very, very easy to see, you know, the, you know, the, to see like the, the type one and the type two, they go opposite directions here. And uh, remember the one thing we, we, one thing we say is, uh, okay, in order to do that, if you increase the sample size, what happened to your distribution? Your distribution will get a tighter. Now, when your distribution get a tighter, automatically your type one and the type two will get a tighter. Correct? All right. So like uh, in here, so just like uh, in here, so that if I increase the, so if I increase the sample size, That means, uh, you know, the, let's try to do this. This was my original, right? Now, if I increase my sample size, uh, then what happened to my, what happened to my distribution? Getting tighter, right? So this is, uh, so let's see here, this is still is H0, right? So the same things here, If this was my original HA, so with the tight with the sample size, your distribution will get a tighter, right? Okay, so make sure that this one is the new. This was the larger sample size. Same like here, right? So this is uh, so this is still is my HA here. Right. Okay. So now let's take a look. So for the same alpha values here. Okay. So like in here, all the one, the alpha values here, right? So for the older one, the red one, this is the alpha value for the older one, the black curve, right? But with this tight distribution, what happens here? Ha, huh. your what? Your alpha value automatically decreased to here. So this is the new alpha, correct? All right, so the same way is here, right? So like we say, okay, now you draw a line, you draw a line, go down here, right? So you draw a line, go down here. So for the HAs here, just like a while ago, we say this one's here, this is your beta. Ha, where is your new beta? 
automatically your new beta will based on this title distribution, right? So this is a new beta. So did you see that? So this is one of the things, right? So this is your new betas here. I need to be careful here. I need to draw here the, uh, this one is uh, just uh, behind the, uh, okay. Need to be careful about my, okay. So the, this will be just a new betas here, right? So automatically you will see you know, that's what to increase the sample size matter, correct? So you, that's, the, that's why we say in order to decrease both, so the first things here you can, so the things you can do here is you can, you know, you can do what here? You can increase the sample size here, right? Okay, so the, ne the next things you can do, to do is the is it has to do with the you know the let's see here let me try to get a, a new page see here so well so it's uh, it's not a want to go to the new pages here okay so now the next thing is here oh yeah here oh boy he's just a slow okay so the let's go to get a new pages here let's take a look of what we call the is the side effect, the effect, the effect of size, right? The, the size does matter, right? So what is the effect of size? So how is this affecting my type one, type two and the power here? Okay, let's do the graph. I think the graph is showing, you know, the, okay, so here, Okay, so this is my non-hypothesis here. Okay, so let's start with non-hypothesis here. And also like we did before, this is my alpha value, right? So this is my alpha. So this is type one, right? Okay, now let me take a look. I have a two, you know, I have a two alternative hypothesis. Here. Okay, so this is my first one. This is HA, all right? And now I have another one here. Let's say here. Okay, this is my another one, right? So this is my, you know, my HA values. So for example, here we say H0, we say the 37%, um, it's a small curves, right? Then my HA said, uh, hey, I want to test is, uh, you know, how about if HAP is equal to the 39% and or, you know, the another ones here, I want to test the, what is the P is equal to the 41%, right? Let's take a look of what is the arrow going to be. Okay, like we did before, let's draw lines here. So the da, 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 touch both, all right. Okay, touch both. So from the previous discussions here, so the type one arrow is here. So if HA, so this is my, what arrows here? This is my beta type two arrows, right? So this is the beta also, right? So this is my other beta for this hypothesis, like a 39 versus 41. So for example, if this is your 37%, so if the, this is I'm testing 37%, this one I'm testing 39%, and this one I'm testing 41% here. Okay, so what did you see? Okay, so the, this is what we call the effect size. So the effect size is the differences between H0 and HAs, right? So like for here, the effect size is like a 2%. And for here to here, the effect size is a 4%. Did you see what happens here? The beta is what? Beta is what? Getting smaller, right? Because the 
In here, you know, this is only the tail area. This is a tail area. So the effect size, the larger effect size, you decrease the small, you decrease the beta type two arrows. Yeah, it's a kind of makes sense, right? If what you want to test is so far away from your non-hypothesis, the chance to make the wrong decision is small, correct? And also let's take a look here, like we did before. This is the one we will really care is what? Is the power, right? So this is the power. And then this is the power. All right. So this is the power. This is the power. Right. So as also you can see when the effect size getting bigger, that means your alternative hypothesis is more away from the non-hypothesis. What happened to your power? Your power get a bigger, right? It's kind of intuitively and the kind of common sense is true, right? So your data should be able to make the correct decision. If like uh, in here, you say it's 37%. If my alternative hypothesis, I say it's 60%. Your data should be making the decision very easily, right? And very powerful, the chance to make the decision is the smallest here. So this is what I tell you. The another thing here is, you know, the effect size does, you know, the change the type two arrow and the powers here. It's kind of like we said, the bigger the effect size, then your test is more powerful. So like if your alternative hypothesis, for example, is here, right? So if your alternative hypothesis, for example, if the HA is like P is equal to the 37.1%. Well, it's 37.1%. You really try to separate the hair to hair differences here. So, you know, your test, unless you have a huge data set, your test will not be too powerful to make that decision with such precision, right? So point one. So that's what I tell you, the effect size is very, you know, important. If you want to be able to separate hair to hair differences between the two assumptions, then you have to increase your sample size here, all right? So now let's try to write it out, uh, the power, right? Okay, so we know what is the power, all right? So let's try to write it. So the power is we use the one minus beta to represent. So the power is when H zero is false, right? Then you fail to reject. Oh, no, sorry. And so here, the H0 is false, and uh, you made the right, correct decision. That's what we care about. So if H0 is false, and you reject H0, so that's good decisions, right? That's the power. So we know the power, you know, the effect size affecting the power. Right, so we know that what is the effect size is the difference between the H0 and the HA. So we said the effect size get larger. What happened? My power what? My power increase. Right, so that means, uh, you know, so let what come to, you know, if you want to really separate the hair to hair differences, very small difference, if you want to distinguish very small differences. So in order to have a powerful test, you have to increase your sample size, all right? But the sample size here, you know, every time you increase the sample size, you know, that's the money, okay? All right, that's it. That is for this lecture. And, uh, very, very important concept about the type one arrow, type two arrow and uh, power, okay? So I think the, you know, the one way to understand, you know, you look at the graph, I think the graph uh, 
you know, really give you the idea why the type one and the type two, they don't go hand, you know, hand to, you know, the side by side, right? They always go to the opposite directions. You know? That's why it's, that's the difficulty for statistics. So how do you choose which one to do? Right, so how do you want to minimize one? That is why in the hypothesis testing, if you if you see a lot of report in the statistics, they always say I'm doing the in the significance level alpha equal to 0.05. So typical, they will fix the type one error, and then they want to you know manipulate the sample size to reach the ideal power you want for your test and you don't make a series like a type one error that's right that's that's most of the practice you fix the type one error and then you go ahead assess what is the power of your test that's it and those are the few very very important key some concepts about a hypothesis testing and uh, then our next lecture, we're going to show one like an uh, application. How do I physically do the hypothesis testing? What is my test statistics looks like and how do I make a decision? After you go through this uh, terminologies, the concept, then the mechanical part really is uh, pretty easy here. All right, it's fun, right? So the, I'm, you know, so that I hope you got a good understanding about uh, the key elements for the hypothesis testing. All right, that's it. And uh, have a fun. Okay, bye. Talk to you later. Okay, bye bye. Have a good day.